You're listening to This Is My Side Hustle, the tips, tools, and advice you need to optimize your life live here. If you're looking to unlock the secrets to additional income by engineering your choices around your ideal lifestyle, you're in the right place. Stay tuned and join us as we unpack unconventional ideas and methods to give you more freedom and flexibility. Let's escape the rat race together and live with intention. Let's learn how others are making it pay with their side hustles. In case you didn't know, Pinterest and Instagram are the best affiliate marketing tools and ways to drive traffic to your website. But did you also know that Tailwind is the only approved Pinterest scheduling tool? That's right, the only one. So Tailwind tracked their users, and here's what they found. Tailwind users get 6.9 times more saves generated. Tailwind users get 3.7 times more followers added. And Tailwind users get 4.2 times more pins published. Pin faster at the best times for engagement with Tailwind. That's right. So visit makingitpaytostay.com slash Tailwind and schedule all of your social media marketing posts on Tailwind and Instagram where all of the younger people are hanging out. Hey everyone and welcome to episode 16 of This Is My Side Hustle. Today I'm going to be talking a little bit about side income ideas, side income uh, potentials, and I have a spreadsheet for you today over at makingitpaytostay.com slash side income. So all one word, S-I-D-E-I-N-C-O-M-E. You can find 145 side hustle ideas ranked. So all of these side hustle ideas are ranked according to what the side income project is, what you need to get started, the complexity, basically low to high based on skills or luck, training, or any kind of certification you might need. And then I also did a realistic grade, low to high, like how realistically is it to, uh, or how realistic is it to actually get started and then monthly earning range when you're just getting started. Now, the monthly earning range could be a lot more, it could be a lot less, but it's it's a, a decent range for you to take a look at. Uh, the average time to earn your first thousand dollars for each of these. The entrepreneurial index from low to high. There's even an introvert versus extrovert scale. So whether you're more extroverted and you want to be around people a lot versus more introverted and hands off of other people, uh, that's in there as well. And then there's also more reading for each of these, or at least most of them, uh, if you wanna learn a little more about it. Now I got this side hustle ideas grader and uh, idea potentials, this spreadsheet I got from Tiller HQ. And I really wanna delve into this a little more Uh, I'd love for you to go check it out for yourself, but let's just talk a little bit about side hustles and how this term and this idea of a side hustle has grown in the past several years. So I went to Google Trends and it's interesting the past five years how much the term second job versus side hustle has changed. So back in... 2013, there was very little interest in side hustle, but on a scale of 1 to 100, it was probably down in the 10s to 15% out of 100 as far as interest goes. It's now kind of peaked in the last year or two. Uh, It's well over 75, up to 100% interest um, based on overall Google Trends, and second job was fairly high five years ago, somewhere between 50 to 75%. It peaked right around 2016, and now it's falling down, and side hustle is actually surpassing interests of second jobs. 
So while a second job uh, comes with all the rigidity and uh, things like having an employer and a commute, a side hustle is often more flexible. So if you have a side hustle, it's something that you own. Um, it's extra income that you're doing on the side that's not necessarily from an employer. A second job would be a, a W-2 job and a side hustle would be a W-9 job, perhaps freelancing or just your own sole proprietorship or an LLC, a single member LLC. So there's a little bit of a difference between a side hustle and a second job. And a side hustle can also be more entrepreneurial and lucrative than a typical second job. So whether you call it a side hustle, gig work, freelancing, running your own business, or moonlighting, sometimes the best and only way to reach your financial goals is by earning additional income. You can save, 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 you can be frugal, but if you don't have a bigger shovel, you're not going to be able to save as much. And Ramit Sethi says, there's a limit to how much you can cut back, but no limit to how much you can earn. In fact, as you cut back on spending, it gets increasingly harder. But as you earn more, it gets increasingly easier, which is really true. Um, you can only cut so much out of your, your budget. You can only save so much. But if you're increasing your income, you can save, save, save like crazy. And you really can keep increasing your income. Um, you can start something as a side hustle or a small business on the side and then start outsourcing to other people so you're pretty much hands-off. You can start all kinds of different side hustles. Some of them require a lot of time at the beginning and then they're practically passive after that. So an example of this would be my Etsy store. I have an Etsy store that I sell digital product products on such as Instagram templates and it takes me 20 minutes to create them and then I put them on Etsy and then I just earn income everyone every time someone buys one. So I don't have to keep spending time to do anything with that. It's all automatic now. So it takes the initial time to set it up and then you just just sit back and get the money. So there is a limit to what you can cut. Sometimes you just simply need to earn more. You might seek additional income to responsibly afford a vacation or upgraded home, but you also might be in crisis and truly need money to make ends meet, pay off a debt, or save enough for an expense that's non-negotiable. Perhaps you want to start something small that could potentially become a full-time small business. Or maybe you just want a change of pace, a job that requires more or less mental or physical effort, or even less time. While more money is always good and sometimes absolutely necessary, choosing a side hustle is easier said than done. There's so many ideas out there and so many options for side hustles, and a lot of people just get information overload and then analysis paralysis, and they don't know what to do or where to start, which is where this spreadsheet comes in handy. Many of the most commonly suggested side hustles aren't lucrative, realistic, or worth your time. For example, many articles about side hustling suggest becoming a YouTube star. Although there are a lot of YouTube stars that you probably know of that are making a decent income, it's really not as realistic nor as lucrative as it was in the past. A lot of those people got started a long time ago when YouTube was just getting started and they slowly built up a following. They got the ad revenue, but now the income from YouTube is not what it was. Uh, it's very difficult, very difficult and very time intensive to become a YouTube star. Likewise, not all side hustles are worth your time. For example, the often suggested side hustle of filling out survey, surveys typically pays dollars per day or less. So a lot of times you'll see people say, get paid to take surveys. And while I've done that a little here and there, it's usually not worth your time. A 20 minute survey might net you a dollar or two, and that's less than minimum wage. So that's not worth doing unless you're doing it when you really could not be doing something else. Perhaps standing in line at the grocery store or sitting in your car waiting to pick up your kids from practice or sitting at the doctor's office and you can't really be 
doing something on your laptop, but you could be taking a survey. Those are fine for times like that. I mean, if you've got a spare 20 minutes and you can earn an extra buck or two and then keep racking that up, that's fine. But I don't suggest sitting down and spending all your time filling out surveys all day. Priceonomic reports that some 84% of all gig economy workers make less than $500 per month. But in particular, workers at get around, 98% of them are under $500 a month. Fiverr and Etsy have especially high percentages of low earners. Okay, so reasons for the low income could vary. Some workers may simply be trying out the platform or put in very few hours. Lyft, TaskRabbit, and Airbnb seem to beat this 84% under $500 average. So those ones are a little more lucrative. Finally, keep in mind the total time it takes for your side income. According to Business Insider, it takes some time to get the dog leashed up and back inside. That, it is, that isn't included in the 30 minutes, so you have to give yourself 45 minutes an hour per dog. So, indeed, there's an increasing awareness that a side hustle isn't always healthy. Before starting your side hustle, you might be better served by asking for a raise, seeing how you might advance at your current job, or changing your job or career entirely. So those are some options you might want to choose before you jump into the world of side hustling. Now, when we talk about side income, uh, a lot of people also mention passive income. So passive income typically comes from the money you invest in the stock market, real estate, royalties, and so on. Earning passive income is a fundamental goal of the financial journey. After all, when you're retired, you're living off of passive income, interest from your various retirement accounts or properties you own or businesses that you've started and set up but are now hands-off and other people are running, but you're still earning money from them. Side hustle income is generally far from passive. It draws on your mental or physical muscles. That being said, some people pursue side hustle work to earn money to invest in passive income projects, such as real estate. So that's something that my husband and I do. We, uh, well, any side hustles I have, we save, and then we're hoping to invest in properties later on. So use that side hustle for down payment or pay cash entirely on rental properties in the future. Over at Get Rich Slowly, J.D. Roth shares the concept of passive income versus passion income. The idea is that passion income is money you generate by simply doing what you love. This is a fantastic idea. Many side hustlers have found ways to make money doing what they love while also earning money. Examples would include calligraphy for cards on Etsy or woodworking, coaching, writing, cooking, and other things. In a Reddit post called Side Income Business for FIRE, and if you go back in previous episodes, you'll find what is FIRE and why should I care. You'll find that episode, and I think you should listen to that. FIRE is Financial Independent Retire Early. That's what it stands for. So in this Reddit post, a commenter noted that in essence, rather than creating a second life, I just monetized all the actions of my first one, which is fantastic. Think of all the things that you do that could be earning you money or things that you love to do and would enjoy doing more of, but maybe you don't spend the time on them because they're not lucrative. Sometimes it's just best to keep your hobby as your hobby though. So think about that. Think, would I still enjoy doing this if I was earning money from it or would it become a job? Only you can answer that, but that's definitely something to consider. Rewire mentions how a woman named Laura Vecchiarella turned her passion for calligraphy and hand lettering into a side hustle, but now it's far more of a job than a hobby. That says she's continuing her side hustle because it brings her joy despite the business stress. And after a conversation with Austin Cleon, Stacking Benjamin's podcast host, Joe, wrote, This idea of speaking in marketing terms and flipping all of our fun into side hustles is disturbing. 
We need hobbies to keep going on our main task. Without hobbies, we don't get time for the out of the trench or to get out of the trench and look at our work from 10,000 feet, which is where he's personally found he needs to be making lasting changes. Plus, hobbies in other areas inform your work. So for some people, monetizing a hobby is a smart, natural choice. For others, it's a mistake that will turn something they love into something they dread. So proceed with caution. So now, I want to go over how this side hustle ranker spreadsheet works. So if you go over to makingitpaytostay.com slash side income, and remember that's all one word, side income, you'll see this spreadsheet and you can sort according to whatever parameters you want to sort through. So to help you rank and choose a side hustle that works for your specific goals, take a look at this spreadsheet. These side hustle ideas pay in money, not rewards or points. So there, there isn't anything on there uh, like taking pictures of your receipts. A lot of, the, a lot of those apps I've mentioned in previous episodes, this doesn't include taking surveys for points that you can then trade in for gift cards. This is all, um, or each of these are all side hustles that actually pay money. And they only chose side hustle ideas that could realistically net $1,000 in three months or less working 15 hours per week. So if you have 15 minutes per week to spare on a side hustle, you could net 1,000 in three months. So that's 4,000 in a year working 15 hours per week. Um, and some of these are a lot more, like I said. Um, and some of these also, you could start putting a little more time into automating certain things at the beginning and then decrease your hours and still make the same amount or more income as time goes on. Starting a side hustle is kind of like rolling a ball downhill. You get momentum, like a snowball, okay? So imagine you make a snowball the size of a basketball and you push it down the hill, and as it goes, it gets more and more and more, and it goes faster, it gains more snow around it, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Starting a side hustle is kind of like that. It's hard at the beginning to get started, and you don't see a lot of income, perhaps, at first, or you, you're struggling learning new skills that go along with your side hustle. That's a big one. Um, but if you stick with it, you'll see in time, if you're willing to put in the time and you're willing to put in the effort, that it gets better and easier over time and you make more and more and you spend less time doing it. Now the spreadsheet allows you to sort ideas by complexity, how realistic they are, a monthly earning range, the average time it takes to earn the first 1,000, and like I said, even the, the introvert index, which I love because there are certain side hustles that I do not want to do because I would be dealing with people all day long and that would drive me crazy. There's other things that if I could do totally on my own and I really don't have to interact with anyone, that's that's a great area for me to be in. It's I can focus really well when it's completely silent and I'm by myself and I don't have a lot of other distractions or other people bothering me. You can also sort and edit ideas by the entrepreneurial index. That is how likely you could turn the side hustle into a thriving small business. So I really think you guys would love this. I love that this spreadsheet has further reading ideas and articles that you can check out. Um, I mean, 145 side hustle ideas, you're sure to find a handful that would work well for you, and you might as well pick a few and try them out. Pick one to start, give it three months, see how it goes. If you don't like it, if you're not earning what you expected, go to the next one and then go to the next one. I really think that if you at least give something a try, you'll find something that you love to do and brings in extra money at the same time, which is fantastic. And that's kind of what this podcast is all about, earning extra money, starting businesses, saving money, everything you need to do to increase your financial independence date, uh, possibly retire early or just be able to create a legacy for your kids and your grandkids and enjoy life a little more. I don't think that all constantly chasing money just to spend it is a good idea, but with more money does come the ability to be more generous and it 
you get freedom. When you have more money, you have more freedom to do things. So it's not necessarily going to make your life better. If you don't know how to manage money when you don't have much, you're not all of a sudden going to know how to manage it when you have more. So keep that in mind. Keep your personality in mind. Um, read some of the books that this spreadsheet suggests. I really think that you'll like it. I love this resource for this week. I'm, I'm super excited about it. So thanks so much for listening, guys. I just wanted to also encourage you, if you haven't already, to rate and leave a review and to share this with your friends. Uh, You can find me over at Instagram at Making It Pay Lifestyle. You can also find me on Twitter at Making It Pay. Uh, There's a Facebook page called Making It Pay. So it's facebook.com slash making it pay. We also have a private Facebook group and I put work at home job opportunities. So those would be second jobs. Uh, Some of them are freelancing. Most of them are employee positions. But if you're wanting to work from home or whether it's full time or even um, part time, I post those every Wednesday afternoon. So I think that's about it. Uh, I don't think I have anything else to say. This is kind of a short episode. I really appreciate all of you guys. Uh, the, the downloads have been up. Um, I feel like I'm getting some traction. If you want to be a guest on the show, go to makingitpaytostay.com slash voicemail. You can leave me a voicemail. You can leave me a tip. Or if you have some side hustle ideas that you've enjoyed, you can just leave a short voicemail message and I might play it on a future episode. So if you want to hear yourself on a future episode, go leave me a voicemail and I would love to hear from you. And I will also respond. Okay? So until next time, this is my side hustle.